We're back here in Springfield and we are joined by Harry Spillman who's a special assistant with the Rangers and their farm system. And Harry, you oversee uh, some of the hitting components uh, of these minor leaguers. Uh, just explain a little bit about what you do and why it's different than maybe something that Scott Coolbaugh does with the organization. Well, not really overseeing the hitting, but I work closely with Cooley and, you know, every time I leave a town I talk to him about, you know, what I see with certain guys and um, just give him kind of an overall overview of what I see compared to what him and Brooke Jacoby travels around and does the same. So, you know, we all three put our heads together and try to come up with the best plan for each, each guy. Now, in game one of this series, you got to see Nomar Mazzara hit his first double-A home run. He hit a couple other balls pretty hard in that ball game. What type of hitter has he become, and where do you kind of see him growing from where he is right now? Well, hopefully let's see him grow as a big league, big league player, you know. You know, at, at his age, he's done exceptionally well. You know, he spent just about two years in Hickory, so he got a chance to iron out some things at the lower level, and seems like things are starting to click for him a little bit. And, you know, you know, he hit a home run last night, but usually that's the last thing that comes with young guys. So um, he's got a chance to be, you know, be a good big league player, and um, he's just got to keep working at it. How much does coachability matter in terms of for a guy like him being able to unlock his potential versus a pure talent? Well, it depends on the individual. You know, he's a great kid. He's he's um, open to suggestions. He's a smart kid. Comes from a great family, as I understand it. So um, he's got what it takes, and now it's just up to him where they can put it all together and you know handle it mentally from level to level, and which we all think he can do. What have you guys been working on with uh, Joey Gallo, player who has just immense potential? Obviously, the power is his calling card. Uh, struggling a little bit uh, over the last couple of weeks or so with some of the consistency and unlocking that. What do you guys try and find in him to be able to get that power coming out a little bit more consistently? Well, exactly what you're saying, consistency, you know. But he's a, he's a young power hitter, and he's going to go through um, what most young power hitters go through is um, inconsistency. And he... And hopefully he can cut those long droughts down as he progresses. And once he gets to the big leagues, maybe they'll be even lower. So, you know, pitch selection he's still working on. And, you know, some things to his swing going down through the ball and, um, say, making more contact. But, again, he's a power hitter, and that's what he's going to be. Have you seen many players with as much power as he has? You've been well-traveled in this game. Is his power truly as rare as it gets? Yeah, he's one of the top. You know, you can't say he's the top, but he's definitely one of the top. Um, some balls he hits, it's the tire and shots he hits. So, um, you know, and the older he gets, the more bats he gets, the more he's going to learn about what pitches he handles the best, and he's going to learn to lay off of certain pitches, and that's going to make him even better. I remember earlier this season you were working with Patrick Cantwell the first month of the year. He really struggled. How impressed have you been with the development that he has shown offensively? I know it's caught the eye of a lot of folks inside and outside the organization. Well, he's improved a lot compared to, you know, last year, even to the first of this year, even though he's struggling, he improved. But from the last time I saw him to last night, he's he's improved even more. So he, um, you know, and him being a catcher, he's not going to have to hit like some guys, but the way he can catch and throw, he's definitely a plus. So, um He's the type of guy that a lot of teams are going to want on their big league team. So especially if he starts hitting even more, that's going to make him that much more valuable. We're here with Harry Spillman, who's a special assistant on the hitting side for the Rangers. Harry, you've had a long career as a player, as a coach. You've been at the big league level as a hitting coach, and here you are as a rover. Uh, what is probably your favorite type of role that you've been in since your playing days? Is it this role where you get to see a lot of different guys in a lot of different places? Or are you somebody that maybe prefers a little bit more stability with working with the same group and same coaching staff over the year? Well, at the time I was coaching in the big leagues and, you know, managing in the big um, minor leagues, coaching in the minor leagues, being a hitting coordinator, all that was what I liked the best at that time. But what I'm doing now, I love doing traveling and seeing all the players in the organization, plus I get to get home more often. Now, I remember when we had you on a couple of years ago, you talked about how Nolan helped uh, connect you with the Rangers a few years ago. Nolan's obviously no longer with the organization, but are you and him still close? Yeah, we still talk. So, um, you know, you know, we've been friends for a long time, so just because he's not here doesn't mean that we don't still talk. So, yeah, I talk to him quite often, and, um, you know, it's just, we've been friends a long time. I saw somewhere where there was a posting of 
back in the early 90s maybe of all the players that Nolan Ryan had struck out and you were not on that initial list and you took some offense to that is that right yeah I told him I wasn't on the list and he he made sure my name was on that list because he knew he had struck me out but that's the kind of friendship we have you know so I was kind of happy that I wasn't on the list until he got some guy to do the research and found out he did strike me out one night so you weren't looking to get on that list. You weren't looking necessarily to get that as a badge of honor. It was him just uh, kind of razzing a good buddy. Yeah, it was something to get on to him about. I read somewhere that uh, when you were in one of your first years of coaching, you helped a, a young slugger break out of his slump uh, by telling him to, to call home and call his parents, and that was Manny Ramirez. Is, is, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Manny was like any other young kid coming into pro ball, you know. As taunted a uh, player he was coming out of high school, we all knew he could hit, and he started out, he was struggling really bad, and I asked him if he had called home lately, and he said no. I said, well, come into my office and call your mom. She doesn't care if you are, are playing good or you're struggling at the plate. She needs to hear from you. So, you know, that's the kind of things that, you know, as a player you, you go through and then you learn through experience, and hopefully you can pass it on to the younger guys. You know, sometimes it's the simplest things just like that, a story like that, that uh, can maybe help a guy. You know, it's not necessarily all what goes on on the field, right? It's sometimes what happens off the field that can help them perform on. Well, it's a lot that goes on off the field these kids have to, you know, adjust to from, especially out of high school. And even uh, the college guys have to make adjustments too. So, um, you know, as a player, you go through all that stuff. And again, this hopefully you can pass on a tip or two that might help a guy get over the get over the hump and go on and have a good big league career. I know that uh, you know the game has changed a little bit from the time that you were coming up, but one thing that's still darn impressive, whether it happens now or whether it happens when you were coming up, is that you were a guy that was not drafted and made your way, willed your way to the major leagues with an organization that had just come off a couple of World Series wins. I know you're probably not going out there telling guys explicitly your story, but is that something that you've been able to share with guys as kind of a motivating thing? Be like, hey, listen, I, I've walked the walk here. I could, I've gone the hardest route possible to get there. Well, it is once in a while, you know, just to let guys know just because they want a top pick, top five picks that, you know, once you get into pro ball, to me, everybody's the same. Um, I think it still comes down the guys that catch it the best, throw it the best, and hit it the best play in the big leagues. So it doesn't matter where you were drafted. Once you get in a pro ball, you're all in the same boat. Finally, Harry, on a personal note, uh, congratulations. You became a grandfather for the first time a couple of weeks ago. How is uh, the grandchild doing? Everybody's good. So, um, you know, everybody talks about how great grandkids are, and I got to experience it, and, and it's, it's awesome. Well, congratulations. It's always great to see you here with the Rough Riders, and uh, we hope to see you again in the near future. Thanks so much, Harry. Okay, thank you. That's Harry Spillman. We're back right after this here on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.